Lifestyle with Jomo. Weekdays, 11 a.m. till 2 p.m. CAT. It's a tune coming through from Botswana representing Vizo and Ban T. Indeed, it's 15 minutes after 12 p.m. Central African time. Gave you those two gems, giving you nothing but some crazy songs over here. AB Crazy also came through right there. But as I said to you, man, today we are sitting, speaking to the managing director of school media, a curator at the Johannesburg Global Sh- Shapers uh, a Hub as well. Uh, his name is K. Tinguenya, my brother, man. Hey, how you doing, Easy man? Dog. Thank you so much for actually taking time to come through, speak to us. It's a hustle Tuesday, so we want to hear what your hustle is all about. <laughs> <laughs> so, for the people that might not know you, can you just you know give us a little intro as to who Ketin Wenya is, uh, the managing director, the guy, you know, the friend, and just you know a little intro. Yeah, nada. Yeah, I'm a good guy, I guess, very <laughs> chilled guy. <laughs> And um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm someone that likes getting things done and making things happen and seeing change in our country. So that's what I do it for. I do it for the future of this country. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, how, did, how did you actually get involved in one? Uh, we're going to get into school media. But how did you actually be a part of, uh, you know, the Johannesburg Global Shapers community? Uh, because I feel that that's a huge platform. <laughs> yeah, sh- there was Ashish Takai. He came through to South Africa and we had a panel discussion with him. And I actually got uh, invited to be on a panel um, then. So I then found out a bit about Global Shapers after the event. Um, and then, uh, long story short, I was then nominated. I had to submit my CV and give my information. And they looked me up. And then I went to, through an interview process. And I eventually uh, made it in as a Global Shaper within the community. Um, so, yeah. So I selected... Um, based on my credit and what I've had done by then because obviously uh, Global Shapers is for uh, young people that have done exceptional um, in their careers so yeah how, how, how has this uh, you know uh, given because I, I would imagine if you're someone who's in business uh, and you know someone who's now coming and working with young people and you're a young person as well how has that had an impact on how you view business as a whole and how you view you know uh entrepreneurship and how growth in the world is how is it you know the the view that came from you working with this sure so i've because global shapers is a global community so it's given me i mean access to the world basically so in at any time of the day i've got a friend i've got a connection you know similar to the caliber that I'm in, you know, the kind of platform, the kind of young people that that I that are shapers, um, and you and that, those are credible sources. So just having being able to move forward in your life and knowing that, I mean that that is one one step ahead. So even at, uh, being part of Global Shapers helps you with your business. I mean, as an entrepreneur, you build networks, you know. Yeah. So it's an it's a network of of young people as well. So. Um, how has it been? Um, it's been amazing, um, especially working with young people. I, I mean, I've learned various things about myself, about leadership. And I mean, uh, being, uh, being a leader, uh, I mean, it's quite a difficult job mm, um, okay. because all the time you have to keep in mind that every, whoever's sitting behind you uh, can obviously and knows that they can do a better job. But, you know, you have to try and keep that and show them this is the way that we're going. And, uh, you know, so... Yeah, it's kind of difficult, but it's very exciting. I love it. I never miss meetings because <laughs> I, I enjoy it. I've yeah. actually never missed a meeting since I was part of uh, the Global Shapers. Yeah. The, you, one of the things that I would think that are the objectives of the Global Shapers community sure. is trying to address the huge problem that we have of unemployment uh, you know, amongst youth, uh, um, uh, poverty amongst youth, and alleviating poverty in Africa as a whole. You know, I, I mean, uh, one of the reasons why we have a feature like uh, Hustle Tuesdays is to try to look at ways in which people People can actually be active in trying to alleviate that, you know, not only uh, looking at organizations like yours, sure. but, you know, the active steps that people can take on a daily basis. 100%. Uh, what are some of the things that, you know, uh, and I think I would say in build are the cause within uh, the Global Shakers community that you utilize to try to address these issues? Poverty, uh, you know, unemployment am- amongst youth and, and, and various factors and various challenges. Sure. I mean, so we The main objective there is to improve the state of the world. Um, so, I mean, what does that really mean? Um, 
So it is what you're talking about within poverty, within just to improve, to to make, to find something, and to improve it to make it better. You know, so we then facilitate um, getting government involved in our initiatives, uh, getting business involved. Um, getting other stakeholders like NGOs and other civil society organizations into one room and then uh, addressing those issues. Um, and then we say, how can you play your part? So we're more of a facilitator, just a soft, um, to, it's more of a, we've more of a soft power movement. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's really how we get involved and we, we try and encourage in, uh, other organizations or to help uh, try a system to get funding or we run our own programs um, such as uh, difficult conversations within the workplace because we know how sexual harassment, what, what it does to people. And it's not only me- uh, females that are affected, it's also males that are affected at the same time. Yeah. Uh, so that's the kind of um, yeah, the issues that we, how we try and get right. in. Yeah, yeah, on the 11th of September, you represented the hub uh, at, uh, in Geneva, in Switzerland, yeah. uh, for the annual uh, you know, uh, curators meeting that was held. Uh, I think uh, you, you had a presentation there? Um, yeah. I was attending with many other uh, 350 cities. Yeah. Um, so everyone, every curator in every major city attended there for the gathering. And it's uh, mainly on learning about what challenges other cities are facing. I mean, mm. in Yemen, um, currently right now, because we're in a group, um, there is about 4.6 million uh, learners that are going to miss school because of 160,000 educators aren't being paid. So, I mean, we've got that information right now and it's just what, what do we do about it? So, it was meeting everyone um, at the same time. So, it's learning about what challenges and how can uh, you guys assist each other and seeing even within your regions, um, in the African region, how we can assist each other and, and uh, p- pursuing initiatives like Open Africa together in, in, the, um, in that. So, it's mainly uniting the shapers and also showing how to your leadership skills yeah um how to manage your hub how to run the hub yeah and how to engage with other stakeholders yeah. uh, uh, by because we need to keep in mind that we represent the WEF uh, world economic forum brand so we need to always keep that in mind so at the end of the day it's actually you keeping your head up yeah. getting to know you know getting to galvanize issues uh, i like what you just said yeah. now people that are around you and see the different challenges that are there because perhaps sometimes it might be a solution that can benefit all of all us, us at exactly. the same time 100 percent. well anyway we're going to be with you all the way to 1 p.m central african time we're going to also get you know it's business today but we're going to get to also know uh mr Ketty, the, the gentleman uh, and the brother <laughs> that <laughs> yeah. is around so uh, a bit uh, later on we're going to ask for some selections coming through from you in terms of music so when we come back, we're going to be speaking about school media, uh, which is uh, what you've funded. Uh, just in, in summing it up a little bit, what is school media? Uh, we're a youth marketing company with access to uh, marketing rights in 9,000 schools across the country. And then part of our revenue goes back to help uplift the schools. So, yeah. So not only are you uh, a curator, but you're also a founder and MD of School Media. Uh, Wearing a lot of hats this morning. We're definitely going to speak to you more about it. It's 24 minutes after 12 p.m. Central African time in the building today. We're sitting with uh, Managing Director of School Media as well as Curator for the Johannesburg Global Shapers uh, uh, Hub. And uh, if you have any questions for him, please make sure that you send us a message. Uh, It's plus two seven seven nine two five double four three two nine, or simply just send me a message on Twitter. It's at Transafrica 872 Hashtag Lifestyle 872 Later on we're going to get to hear his taste of music But for now we're going to get something coming through from Sarkodi Yo, shout out to Cuppy for giving us that one It's called Slide It's the Cuppy remix of Kelvin Harris's Slide uh, One of the great gems right now 32 minutes after 12pm Central African time If you didn't know, now you know Hashtag Lifestyle is in the building Make sure to hashtag us on Twitter And on Instagram It's uh, Hashtag Lifestyle 872 Follow myself jo underscore motj on twitter and instagram in the building here today we're speaking to managing director of school media his name is k tingue and yeah having spoken to him earlier a bit about the work that he was doing uh, or he still is doing uh, as part of the johannesburg global shakers uh, community and now we're getting into the business side of it you know i think first and foremost you're a businessman sure. <laughs> and uh, school media 
uh, as you explained it before we, we took that uh, little musical break, uh, is that it's a, it's a youth marketing agency, right? Yes. A school, media, uh, let's perhaps get into uh, how you came up with this because, you know, it, it's, you, people have PR companies or media companies, but sure. this one is, even when the packaging and the company itself is, is a niche market on its own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you get into that and how you came about with this idea of school media? Um, yeah, so I was part of an organization uh, a few years ago, uh, Young Entrepreneurs of Soweto. That's while I was in school. And basically there I learned more about the formal side of business. Besides that, I, I had been selling uh, products and products before, like firecrackers and sunglasses and that. Uh, but then uh, really where I learned the formal side of business and how to register a company was at Young Entrepreneurs of Soweto, which was uh, run through Soweto Business Executive Chamber. And, um, and ever since I learned that information, getting, having the right information uh, can actually help you a lot. And some of the stuff you don't actually get at schools. So I wanted to get this to a number of young people um, at an early age, obviously, so that um, they can better their lives. Um, so I then came to the fact that it's not only entrepreneurship that people might need information on. It's about other organizations as well or other career paths that they want to take. Um, you know, if it, even if it's not careers, even if it's about uh, how is this microphone made, you know, um, and and things like that. So I then found out that it would be branding if I wanted to do this um, because I first thought of a magazine and I realized the magazine, it's too much admin, you know, a lot of print copy, kids will throw it away. So then I identified some frames and then I actually started going to the schools asking them if I could use their walls. Mm. Um, to provo- to place material from A0 to 6 meters by 2 meters on the wall and then part of that revenue goes back and helps to uplift the school and then I can then go out looking for that those kind of clients um, you know so that's that's where it's been at the moment um, in 2012 we managed to partner with the National Association of School Governing Bodies and uh, allowed us access to their network of schools and then we had to get another right information and also um, declining some of um, the other clients that, couldn't, that can't obviously uh, get to that market or aren't good for that kind of uh, market. So it's a very niche market and it's not like someone's every day looking to talk to this market, but it's soon becoming um, that because a lot of people realize that the, the, the majority of the population is the youth and they are the influencers. Um, so it is smart um, um, starting to speak to them from an early age. You know, brands yeah, work so much at trying to get, uh, you know, students and, you know, people who are in school. Yeah. Whereas it, it, what you just did with the companies, take the brands to the kids, mm-hmm. you know. So so uh, the challenges, you know, because I'm asking this question because I know there's someone who's sitting out there who has an idea about a business, something as similar as yours or something, sure. you know, much greater than what you've came up with. Yeah. And they you know they, it's kind of like you know being sh- being hold with shackles not even knowing where to go <laughs> but the challenges or uh, let me not even say the challenges the biggest thing that you as a businessman first came across and still live by and actually use today in business that someone out there might not know what is that <laughs> i've i guess that's ma- that's partly religion yeah um I guess when, when I was in grade three, there was a very um, interesting uh, poster on the wall um, that wrote, do your best and God will do the rest. Oh. Um, and ever since, it's, it's always been about, uh, let me put my best effort, let me try and make it happen. And it's, it's really trying to make it happen is, is going out there. So, I mean, when I started, when I managed to uh, sign the business um, rights um, to get th- access to the 9,000 schools, I literally walked into uh, organizations. I literally, uh, I didn't set up an appointment because that wasn't working. I literally walked through the doors and tried to set up appointments there. And eventually I got appointments. But uh, then you learn that's not the way that you market this sort of business. Mm. Uh, that's not how you sell this kind of business. So you really had to, then I really had to try different strategies. Um, so by trying the obvious is the, is the main thing that will then op- unlock other things. So it's always, always try the obvious. Even if it's too obvious, 
don't think about it that it's not gonna because a lot of people already have negative thoughts before they start something mm. so ignore the negative thoughts and just uh, carry on doing it um, and yeah because some people might be like but everyone is trying it so <laughs> it's not gonna work out for me yeah but anyway so um, as you just uh, put it us you know put it down for us uh, the side of school media uh, and what you're doing I, at the end of the day you might be a curator and an MD but you're still a guy right yeah absolutely. <laughs> and I want to get into the type of music that you love as well uh, you chose a song uh, that I'm gonna actually just play now is music is always I, I listen to music more than I do anything else so um this is one of the songs that I that I like that keeps me going. Uh, inspired, maybe it's a morning kind of song, yeah. or a jolly kind of. Uh, so it's yeah. got different moods. So I really, I re- I listen to almost every single kind of uh, music. Music, yeah. Yeah. Now we, we're gonna we're gonna call it the hashtag Hustle Tuesday music because uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a song by A One Wolf coming through right there, selected by the one and only K Tingwenya, uh, who's the MD of School Media. So. You know, drawing to the close of the interview, uh, I've, I've, lear- I've actually learned so much uh, from what you, you know, you've put down and what you've said. And, you know, I like the fact that uh, you educated me on one of the things, uh, you know, the, the, the Johannesburg Global uh, Shapers community is actually uh, the mother parent or the parent company is uh, World Economic Forum. And I've, for the longest time, I've always had it, you know, I think it's because, you know, sometimes you don't know things. But uh, I've always had this thing in me that said, but why is the World Economic Free- uh, forum just you know the old guys that are sitting there <laughs> and some of the celebrities that are being brought in to talk about their stories but i'm glad uh, indeed that you know uh exactly. they, they, there's there's the you know the, the global youth. shapers youth uh, side of it and something else that you mentioned a bit earlier speaking about the relationship between uh, old people and, and young people coming into a world where you're a young person you're a businessman uh, you're a curator of this huge hub and you are exposed to executives of, of other big companies, which predominantly might be older people. Yeah. Uh, what, what, do you, what, uh, what, what do you think? And, and, you know, I'm not bashing old people and I'm not saying old people, you <laughs> know, go. you know how people are. Yeah, no, you want to have a stance against like uh, uh, older people. But uh, you know that there's a certain way of, of business uh, that older people in business do. And, yeah. you know, there's always this. I don't know. I don't know how I can put it down, but I think you you understand exactly what I'm yeah, talking about. Yeah, there's always like a bit of a uh, um, their kids. Yes. So that 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 in effect, I think that needs to parents need to let go, and 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 let their kids fall. You know, mm. if they must, they must fall. And I uh, and um, a lot of businesses have been scared to. They're saying they're scared to invest in Africa, and uh, you know the the economy is not stable and so on. But they're not really giving money to, um, you know, through organizations and NGOs they do, but they're not giving money to young people to fail. Um, so, I mean, at some point, they need to, there needs to be that, uh, yeah. that set aside. I mean, there's already billions going wasted in corruption funding. Uh, so, I mean, what would it take, you know, what, how much, I mean, how much potential would we have if they have to fund young people? You know, mm. if NYDA's um, regulations or weren't so strict for young people to get funding and uh, it would make it much easier because currently it's like a normal it's like any given bank you know yeah. you need to prove yeah. your income you need to do this yeah. and this so what risks are they actually taking to actually better the lives of, of young people and I think maybe the, you know some most uh, some countries that are very uh, you know successful might yeah. have just thought about that and said you know what Let's let let's invest in these kids the same way as you would you know invest in a child. To exactly. Say, you know a child would work at it will work at, at a specific point of their life. But I think yeah, closing it off uh, as Trans Africa, we we empower African artists by sure. playing hundred percent of their music, and that's you know that's that's a that's a bucket in an ocean. Not sure. a yeah. <laughs> For us, it's a bucket in an ocean because you know it slaps on so many people's faces to say yeah. yo, these guys are literally playing hundred percent music. Uh, that is African, empowering Africa. Sure. And with that, with with that being said, with us, you know, empowering mm. African artists by playing hundred uh, percent African music. What do you think about that? And maybe speak on empowering Africa in a hundred percent way, not wanting to take anything away from it. Sure. So, um, I guess it's a it's a very good thing. But we've we've you know I I really think we've always been pro African and. Uh, we're always trying hard to be to be African, and uh, I, I think it's time that we stop trying and we should start making these things normal. 
and not talking about them as if it's African, this is African. We should uh, actually try to find a thing, not find, but it should be a normal thing um, that, okay, we're only playing African music and that's because we, we African. <laughs> you know, uh, it shouldn't be like, oh, should we do it? Should we do it or not? We, uh, sh- we're doing it. That's the way that we're going. And I guess uh, uh, we've always stepped back and stumbled over onto things and really not doing it. But I think this generation now, um, you know, your generation Z and your millennials, they really want to see, they are really going to make a change in this continent. And whatever is happening with these old, uh, you know, pe- in Africa, they are really being more patriotic and and owning it up you know so i i think it's a really it's a good thing but at the same time um you it would it's nice to be exposed to to a global uh, global uh, genre um but to grow africans it's better that we start appreciating our own music more than anything and also start building a culture that that we have you know because there are so many cultures that are missed in africa and that aren't even um, recognized as cultures. Um, so I think that such a platform will help us really uh, build a stronger, uh, a stronger Africa. You know, uh, a Jonathan out there who's in Soweto or who's in Nairobi, yeah. who, who wants to be a part of the Global Shakers community, not only in South Africa, but throughout the, the world. world yeah. uh, how does one actually jump into that? And I think also, you know... Um, uh, polarizing sc- uh, school media, you know, because I feel as though it's such a great idea that we you, we have such a company that's a- a- active in a- in South Africa on in every single province. Sure, it would actually go a long way I- in being active in Africa as well as 100%. a whole. So I think the polarization of your company, how how do people get interactive throughout the world and throughout Africa, and uh, how do people also get involved with uh, co- uh, the global uh, shapers community? Sure. Sure. So global shapers community, we've uh, there's a website out there, globalshapers.org. And you just select what major city you're from and then it would put you in contact and you can f- fill in a form and you just have to wait uh, for when the interviews take place for that particular hub. And for school media, schoolmedia.co.za, you can just fill in the contact form there or reach us directly on our landline. All details are on the website. Oh yeah, man! Thank you so much. Uh, your song selection, your last song selection, just before you leave. Uh, I think it's close to December, so let's take it back to the beach with Sketch Bongo. All right, all right. Thank you so much, my guy, for actually coming through. That is uh, uh, KT Nguenya, who's the managing director of School Media and also curator at the Johannesburg Global Shapers Community, uh, which uh, is part of the World uh, Economic Freedom uh, Economic uh, Forum. Forum. Yeah, Economic Freedom Fight. <laughs> <laughs> not us. Not us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, man. Thanks, thanks so much for having me. 51 minutes after 12 p.m. Central African time. If you just joined us in the building now and you've missed the interview, do not worry. You can actually stream us on uh, transafricaradio.net. And uh, we actually have the podcasts that are always available. So you can just go there, download it, and let's definitely do the most. Uh, that one is coming through uh, from... Um, Sketchy Bongo as well as Shekina uh, giving us a uh, song called uh, Back to the Beach uh, as well as Kyle Dutch. It's a selection by Kate Nguyenya. Having him in the building for the past hour speaking about business and being a shaper in this world. Hashtag Lifestyle872 on Twitter and Instagram. Good afternoon. This, this, this is Trans Africa Radio.